day. Today we're talking to Dr. Rebecca Swart from the History Department. Welcome, Rebecca. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. So tell us, how did you become a researcher? Um, so I've been researching for quite a long time. I was very lucky in my undergrad um, to have the opportunity to conduct some research as part of a third year project. Um, and during that project, I spent a lot of time in the South African Library looking at old newspapers um, and it was a small project but it really got me excited about doing research um, and so pretty much consistently since then I've been working on various bits and pieces of research through my honours, masters and then doctoral and postdoctoral career. Mm -hmm. Yeah, how did you become interested in history of all subjects? You know it's interesting because I think it's something I was always quite passionate about and um, from the time I was in school, I remember being interested in history. And then I had really, really good teachers um, and lecturers at undergraduate level um, who taught me not just a traditional political history um, mm. kind of syllabus, but introduced us to social histories, histories of gender, um, histories of race, and um, things that felt incredibly relevant to our current life. Um, I started to realize that some of the questions that we face today are best answered when we look into the past. And so for me, it's been quite a, a long-term interest. And, and I'm more interested, I suppose, in everyday people, um, ordinary people, um, and what has motivated them. Definitely, um, I also past. always love history. Mm. So tell us, what are you currently working on? So at the moment, very slowly, <laughs> I'm working on a book about the history of childhood. Um, so I'm looking at the period around slave emancipation in the Cape Colony, and I'm interested in how ideas about what it meant to be a child changed at that time. So as people who had been enslaved were free, there were all sorts of questions about what should happen to their children. Should they receive education? Um, who should look after them, who was responsible for their welfare and so on. So that's what I'm currently working on. Oh, that's great. Any research gaps in your field that you've managed to identify? Um, so I think for a long time, historians in Africa have been interested in age and in generation and in youth in particular, but not as much in children themselves. Um, because children have been seen as kind of unimportant members of society. And so I think the work that I'm doing at the moment is really about saying what happens to our understanding of the past if we take children as kind of the central point of focus? Does yeah. that change the way that we see the past? Yes. Yeah. So like you said, research is an interesting field. So how would you inspire other researchers or would-be researchers? Give us some, some wisdom there. <laughs> um, I would say, I mean, I say this often to students, is work on something that you really care about. Answer a question that you want to answer. It's no good if you want to do a history honours or master's degree and you just work on what your supervisor says, this is what you must work on and you don't care about it. Because I think particularly with historical research, you're often going to archives and um, or you're conducting interviews, it takes a really long time and it requires a huge amount of patience. There will be days in the archives where you'll sit for a full day and find nothing relevant to your topic. And if you don't really care <laughs> about what you're doing, um, it can be incredibly disheartening. Um, so I would say kind of being patient, doing something that you care about, and then also being open. Um, to what comes out of the research process. I think very often we tend to go into our research with a particular idea about what we're going to find. And one of the wonderful things about archival research is that you never know what's going to crop up. Something interesting always jumps. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And you have to be open to changing your mind um, when you get new evidence. No, for sure. Yeah. So, one final question. You mentioned you have a two-year-old at home. Yeah. What do you do for recent relaxation when you're at home? <laughs> um, at the moment, those are quite foreign concepts to me. Um, I'm very much hoping for some rest and relaxation <laughs> soon. Um, I do quite a lot of sewing 
Um, so I make a lot of my own clothes and I oh, find lovely. that really relaxing. Um, and it's nice to do something creative that requires a whole different set of skills to my research brain or my teaching brain. Um, but at the moment, it's a lot of um, entertaining a team. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. It's I'm cool. lucky I'm fast there. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you for I really enjoyed this and good luck going forward. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.